A&M set, which is the Doc 2, the Centrite set containing the Centrite Elder, the First Doctor, and a Centrite Warrior. Now I have reviewed the Keys of Marinus set containing two Vord and Ian Chesterton. I'll leave a link in the description below to that review and a little card thing at the top so you can check out that review. Um, so yeah, we've begun the B&M sort of quest and hunt to find these sets. Um, so if you are a fan of your Doc 2 figures, and please do like and subscribe because there's plenty of figure content on the channel and coming up in the near future. So the way this review is going to work is I'm going to do the packaging, articulation and detail and comparing the figures of what character options have used to make these new figures. So let's dive into the packaging. Taking a closer look at the Sensorite set packaging, so we've got the traditional style guide packaging motif there, we've got a great window box displaying the figures there, the limited edition sticker, the name of the set, and then the scale of the figures, the side, and the other side, and the back we have a prototype image of the figures themselves, and we do have a nice little bio on the Sensorite story itself, which is a lovely touch. A new edition for the three packs is a backdrop, so we've got a lovely rendition of the spaceship from the Sensorite, so this is a lovely display piece if you want to display the figures in there. So here is the first Doctor figure, so we'll do the articulation in detail and then we'll go on to a comparison comparing all the other first Doctor figures to this one and what character options have used to make this new quite quirky first Doctor figure. Take a look at the articulation for the first Doctor, so the head can move side to side, the arms can do a full 360 degree turn, we have 360 degree turn at the bicep bend at the elbow, 360 degree turn at the wrist, we do have waist articulation but it is incredibly stiff and is hindered by the jacket, the legs can kick out and kick backwards and can move ever so slightly because they're on a T crotch joint but again hindered by the coat, we have 360 degree turn at the thigh and bend at the knee. In terms of paint apps for the face I have to say that this figure does look a lot better in person because the original promo images of this figure the figure had a very vibrant sort of red eyes very much like the first um, first Doctor figure back from 2009 but I have to say that it's not as prominent in person but the paint apps on the face are very crisp as you can see the lines on the forehead we've got the slight bags under the eyes there and sort of the sagginess of the skin and again we've got the sort of jawline there so we've really got the bone structure of William Hartnell's face there and it definitely does look very much like William Hartnell and it is a very nice uh, crisp paint up on the face to really help accentuate all those little details there of sort of the crow's feet by the eyes it just does look very good. In terms of the costume now we've got sort of the traditional first doctor sort of waistcoat there with a nice sort of beige patterning there with silver stripes and the little monocle detail very great and then we have the sort of Edwardian um, winged collars there which is really nice detailing and of course, one thing what I love about this figure in particular is the lovely, vibrant Royal Navy blue cravat, which really does pop uh, against the figure with this sort of weird sort of reddish brown trousers. But we'll get onto those in a minute. Um, the jacket is very much just moulded in a sort of black plastic. We've got the same sort of detailing there, the buttons and the seam of the jacket, the pocket sculpted there. And again, really nice sort of stitching detail there to see where the jacket has been stitched together. And again, that continues on the back there with sort of the seams there and the buttons on the back. And of course, we do have the buttons on the cuff of the jacket itself. We do have the First Doctor's iconic ring, um, but sadly it hasn't been painted blue. It has been remained silver, much like on the Web Planet version. Um, again, waistcoat, we've got the nice little silver uh, buttons there, which really does help the figure pop. And then if we move down to the trousers, this is where it gets a little bit wrong. Uh, because if you know the sense right, you know that the first Doctor has his traditional sort of cream at check trousers. But this is obviously incorrect. This is very uh, inaccurate to the story. Um, I personally, if they were going to do this sort of variant, maybe just do like a grey trousers with the small checks. Because we haven't had that yet. Uh, maybe we'll see that in the sort of first Doctor and TARDIS set but we've got this sort of moulded in um, brown plastic with a sort of a darker brown sort of check design which you know what I have to say I do like this figure I have to say it's one of those figures what just has I fallen in love with um, since getting um, yeah it does feel like a variant for the sake of being a variant but I do really like it it does seem like a, a thing you'd see the first Doctor wear in like a 1960s annual so we've got sort of a nice sort of check detail there the creasing details and of course we have the seam of the trousers there and rather oddly I've got one sort of leg darker than the other you can see that this one's a lot more darker sort of almost muddy um, compared to this uh, other leg which is rather rather odd really um, the shoes we've got this sort of spat designed there um, with a sort of darker brown there against the black which really does help sort of accentuate and differentiate the shoes and just makes it seem 
a little bit more different and a bit more vibrant and really helps it stand out on the shelf. Um, so that is the detail for the first Doctor figure. Rather odd to have these trousers, but I have to say, I oddly like it. Moving on to a comparison section now. So here is a lineup of all the first Doctor figures, what we've seen released over the past few years in the character options line. So we've got the Unearthly Child, first Doctor, then we have the San Diego Comic-Con 2009 first Doctor variants there. Then we have the Toys R Us first Doctor, the Sensorites, the Web Planet, and the Eleven Doctors free Doctor set um, first Doctor. Um, so that is the first Doctor lineup. So let's do a comparison on what elements character options have used to make this new variant of the first Doctor. So the main figure's character option I've used to make this Sensorite first Doctor figure is the Toys R Us first Doctor and the Web Planet one from the 13 Doctor set. So the top half is essentially in terms of the costume is the Toys R Us one there. As you can see the cravat is a lot more of a vibrant blue. Um, yeah, so that's basically the top half, but the paint apps in terms of the face are very similar to the web planet version there in terms of like the hair sculpt as you can see it's ever so slightly darker on the center right version um, but in terms of the trousers you can see that they are a lighter brown compared to the web planet one and the shoes um, are slightly different because you've got the sort of spat design there on the web planet version but the sort of more dull sort of burgundy brown on the center right version there so you can see the difference in the check whether it's a lot more of a darker brown on the uh, web planet version. Moving on to the final two figures in this set and that is of course the Sensorites. Now this is just incredible that we have new Dog 2 monsters and is of course from the 1960s so this feels truly special and just so marvellous to have Sensorite figures. It's just very surreal seeing them in the shop to have these you know Sensorites from you know 1960s you know in B&M stores it's just absolutely wonderfully bizarre and I love it so let's take a look at the articulation and then we're going to the detail for the center right themselves articulation wise for the center right it's exactly the same for both figures so the head can move a full 360 degree turn the arms are ball jointed the arms can do a full 360 degree turn 360 at the bicep bend at the elbow 360 degree turn at the wrists we do have a waist swivel what can do a full 360 degree turn the legs can kick out and back and to the splits. We do have 360 degree turn at the thigh, bend at the knee and 360 degree turn at the foot. Moving on to the detail for the centre right, I guess it's like recreating sort of episode one's cliffhanger having the centre right back close just appear. Um, but yeah, we're going to take a look at the warrior centre right in terms of the detail and then we'll have a look at the first elder just looking at the slight variations of paint what these centre right figures have. Um, so we take a look at the head sculpt. Now this head sculpt is tremendous. Now if you've seen the sense rights, then you know that the masks don't really fit some of the actors very well. They sort of do look a bit like they are masks. Um, but I have to say that the sense rights are one of those monsters what translate beautifully into figure form. And character options have done a splendid job um, bringing the sense rights to life in figure form. So we take a look at this glorious head sculpt. So we've got the slight sort of lines on the forehead, which you can see ever so slightly there on the actual figure. They are there. You can see sort of the, the detail there, which is really nice. Um, the sort of lines there to give that a nice sort of sense of detail. We've got the sort of centrite eyebrows there, They're all very jazzy eyebrows. Um, and one thing what I like about the centrite is the sort of sculpting detail of the dimples. Uh, it's really nice little attention to detail and you can just see how alien they look and it's just tremendous. So we've got the sort of the great sort of brownie sort of grey beard there and that's sculpted there with nice sort of elf ears and that sort of hair is sculpted all the way there and you can sort of see the sort of back of the centrite skull there with that sort of indentation. Really great sort of sculpting work by character. I think they've really sort of updated the sense rights to fit sort of the modern day era. It just really does translate beautifully and obviously having the different paint apps on the beard really does give it that sense of depth and texture. All brilliant stuff. In terms of the costume, we have the Axon Man sort of Sarah's Jack body. If you want to have a closer look at the comparison to that, then please do check out my Keys and Marinus review where you can have a closer look at that because I'll just be saying the same stuff um, as I did in that video about the sort of body but that's been slightly retooled with new hands and retooled legs uh, to accommodate the centrite's rather groovy feet which we'll get onto in a little bit. Um, so we've got sort of the leotard look there with sort of the creasing detail um, there of the actual costume which is all great. We've got the sort of seams going along the arm and of course we've got these sort of black bands there to sort of represent the warrior class of the centrites and we do have the centrite sort of communication sort of stethoscope 
um, which has been sort of sculpted very you can sort of see the grating effect there um, that has been painted on the sort of wire um, to give that illusion of the sort of wire so do be careful of quality control if you want to get a pristine sort of sensor right sort of um, stethoscope sort of thing um, I guess it was probably too costly to do an actual sort of rubber piece there and of course over time that would perish um, but one thing what I do love about the sensor right figure is that you get sort of the 3D printed zip there going along the back to see where the actors would go along in the actual costume and then we have the collar of the sensor right costume there to give that illusion um, very great detail and one thing what I like about the sensor rights is sort of the hand sculpt because they're so spindly it really gives it that alien feel which I really do like about this um, so if we move down to the legs not much to say got again a great creasing detail to give it that lifelike effect and a great creasing detail there um, which I really like and of course we have the feet which are really well done as you can see where the sort of actors feet sort of begin and where it's sort of been swamped by the sensor right actual feet there and we've got a slight sort of scuffing weathering detail where the actors would be moving around the studio blindly um, trying to get to their mark which is really lovely um, in terms of the difference of paint apps um, the main difference is of course sort of the paint apps on the face with the sort of the eyebrows being a slightly different color and of course the beard and the older sensor right having the sash there um, of course you can customize it there to make another version of the sensor right another elder and I think if you sort of remove the sash and paint um, the collar black then you can get a sort of another variant I think you can get about at least five variations of sensor right from this figure set um, so if you're a customizer then you're going to have a field day um, with, and of, of course the leotards are slightly a different color you can see but this one's slightly darker compared to the elder um, and that's sort of the main differences with the actual sensor rights um, but if we take a look at the accessory wise they come with their little egg whisk uh, sort of tennis racket things which are really lovely um, who would have thought if we would have sensor right figures and they come with their accessory um, you can give them to the Doctor and Ian because they do use them when they're sort of searching the aqueduct I remember uh, it's been a while since I've watched the sensor rights but yeah really nice little detailing there sort of the sculpting detail uh, of the ridges really great little inclusion and really does make the sensor right figures pop when you put them in the sensor right hand so yeah that is the detail for the sensor right so that concludes my review of the bnm sensor right figure set so what do i make of this set well i think that this is a must simply because the sensor right figures are really something special to have new 60s monsters what aren't dalek cybermen or mechanoids it's just great to add a little bit more variety to the first doctor era and i have to say the first doctor figure though i wasn't initially keen on it i have to say that i have become a fan of it it's one of those figures what oddly grows on you the more you have it it is a little bit of a shame about the trousers it would have been nice if they did either sort of a cream um check trousers or just the gray check trousers to keep it more in line to how the first doctor costume was on screen but it makes for a nice little variant what you can imagine being in sort of the comics or the doctor annuals back in the 1960s but the main attraction of this set is of course the sensor right and they are a sheer delight and what an oddity to have these doctor monsters on the figure shelf and i'm so grateful the character options to be adding new monsters to the Doc 2 figure shelves and I absolutely love it. So I definitely do recommend the Sensor Right figure set. Um, thank you very much for watching this figure review. If you've enjoyed this video then please do like and subscribe because it really does help the channel out and there's plenty more Doc 2 figure related content coming up in the near future with the two History of the Dalek sets to be reviewed from the recent B&M wave and of course we've got more B&M sets coming out later this year so there's plenty more Doc 2 figure content coming up so thank you very much for watching this review and i'll see you next time for one of the dalek set reviews bye bye